Okay, welcome back. We'll be looking at a, a couple different polynomials this time, and we'll be trying to solve these uh, second degree equations. Let's just jump right in then. I did these on the board before, but now I want to show you again how I did it. Uh, I know a few of you are gone, so let's just start. We have a second degree equation. Here, here you can see that it is, it is that. Uh, we are going to try and find what x or wi which x make this true. Now, you could use the PQ formula, but we don't want to <laughs> because we want to have fun doing it a different way, just like I showed you on the board. So we'll just jump right in, and I'm making here a couple of parentheses, putting in some x's there, and this is what you do every time you don't want to use the PQ formula. So we will be looking at 10 first <clears throat> and ask ourselves what makes 10. In other words, what two or more prime numbers cause 10 to come into existence when you multiply them together? And here I've, I've made them. There's going to be a 2 there and a 5 there. That makes 10. 1 in 10 works, but that's not very interesting. Uh, it, we may come across a second degree function where 1 times 10 would be the thing we would use, but today it's not that. Let's just take the 5 here and the 2 there. I could switch them. It wouldn't make any difference. And we're going to ask ourselves now, when we have 5 times 2, we need to get minus 10. But since we uh, also need to have positive 3 when we add the 5 and the 2, how are we going to make that work? Well, let me show you. If we have positive 5 and negative ten, uh, 2, then when you multiply those two together, you're going to get your negative 10. When you put them together like 5 and negative 2, and we're not talking about multiplication, we're talking about addition. You're going to have 5 minus 2, and that gives you the 3. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so in other words, you look for two numbers that you multiply together and get the minus 10. Then you're looking at the same two numbers when you add them together that you get the second term right there what's in front of it. You, you ignore the x for that because we just want to see what, what works for that. All right, we're almost done. Now we just got to ask ourselves, how do we make this term, the x minus 2, into 0? What does x have to be to make this 0? Well, if x was 2, then 2 minus 2 gives you 0, okay? And I'm calling that x1, the first solution. Now an x2 will be for this next term. What does x need to be here so that it turns into 0? Well, negative 5 plus 5 gives us 0. Now why do we want one or both of these terms to be zero. Well, it's like this. If you have two numbers multiplied together, say, oh, I don't know, k and m, just whatever, k is something and m is something, and it's equal to zero, you can be guaranteed that at least one of them is zero. There's no other way to get zero unless one of them is zero. So x minus 2, this part right here, let's just say it has to be 0. What does x have to be then for that to be true? Alternatively, you can say, well, this is the one that's 0. What does x have to be to make that true? And then you just put in the numbers that make it true. Well, I hope that helps. Let's go on to the next one then. This one's kind of fun too. 
if you were going to use the PQ, you would be first be required to divide every term by 3 because you're not allowed to have a number with the PQ formula in front of there. <clears throat> I've shown some of you the universal one, um, but we don't need to use either of those right now. We will still divide by 3 because it will simplify things. It's much more difficult to do what I showed you before without doing that. So let's divide by 3 and let's just see what happens. Okay, 3 divided by 3, that gives 1. That gives 1. Now this one doesn't give 1, but it does give a 12. So let's, let's clean it up. We have x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. Okay, now let's just jump right in. The first thing you do, set up all the parentheses, put in a couple of x's here, then ask yourself, what makes 12? Now, in, in this case, we can use 4 and 3. And I'll show you why. We want negative 12. So that means 1 has to be negative. I'll just go ahead and save time and show you which ones it is. Positive 3 times negative 4 gives negative 12. And positive 3 minus 4, when you slam them together, you get minus 1. And that is what is in front of the x right there. So we're almost done. I just need to clean up here. OK, next step is, again, Ask yourself, how do you make that blob into 0? Well, if x is, x1 I'm calling this, the first solution. If x is negative 3, then negative 3 plus 3 gives you 0. The other solution, x2, the second one. If x is positive 4, then positive 4 take away 4, you got 0. So these are the solutions. And you can test it by plopping it into the original, which uh, I'll leave to you guys so that I don't waste any more of your time. Uh, and you can test it yourselves and see that it is actually true. Okay, see you next time.